My name is Dr. Don Wicker, and today we're going to continue to talk to you about organizational behavior. We're talking to you about lecture series number 10, and our topic today is leading and developing teams. Some of the things about developing teams, we're going to look at features of groups. Uh, as we know, informal groups goals and formal organization goals are not necessarily related. Uh, they often meet their members' social and security needs, and they may exercise undesirable power over individual members from perspectives of higher management. And they may also make, exhibit both positive and negative characteristics. Those are features of informal groups. Common types of work-related teams. What are some of the common types? Think about this. You have functional teams. You have problem-solving teams, cross-functional teams, self-managed teams, and in today's technology world, we have virtual teams, and of course, we have global teams. So let's take a look at the first one, functional teams. Of course, functional teams, members work together daily on similar tasks, and they must coordinate their efforts, which is real important when you have functional teams coordinating their efforts. Problem-solving teams are uh, sort of self-explanatory. Members focus on specific issues develop potential solutions, of course, and they're empowered. That empowerment piece is real important in problem-solving teams. And of course, you have cross-functional teams where members from various work areas identify and solve mutual problems. Self-managed teams. Self-managed teams and problem-solving teams are kind of related because self-managed teams um, basically are interdependent empowerment of uh, members to solve a problem. Virtual teams, as I explained before in our technological age, they're basically coordination of, uh, of members and, and teams projects utilizing technology. And of course we have global teams where members are not in one location, they're in other countries, other regions, but they're still solving problems as a team in a global fashion. When we talk about teams, of course teams have stages. The stage Stages of team development are real important. Of course, when teams form, we call that the forming stage. As they progress, they deal with the storming stage where ideas are coming in and people are trying to get a, a commonality regarding their ideas. We have the norming stage where people are trying to get familiar and agree on a particular, a particular subject. And of course, we have the performing stage where people are actually doing something in those teams. All those teams that we named previously well, that's when the work actually starts. And of course, after those projects are finished, we have the adjourning stage, where, they come, where the teams come together and decide or evaluate their performance. Some influences on team effectiveness. When teams are grouped together, there are things that affect what happens in those particular teams. Of course, size of a team can be an effect. The norms, people don't always think alike, so they may not always agree on certain ideas. And that cohesiveness, how does a team come together? Are they going to be cohesive, or are you going to have a lot of people doing uh, their own thing as far as the team is concerned and not having a leader? And, of course, leadership on that team can also influence a team's effectiveness. Norms. You know, we mentioned norms a couple of seconds ago, but... Think about norms, the roles and patterns of behavior that are expected and accepted by members of a team. And of course, people are, have different environments that they, that they come from, different backgrounds. So norms aren't going to always be something that a team can control. Cohesiveness. Now, of course, cohesiveness means the strength of a member's desire to remain in a team and their commitment to it or to the project. Of course, if you have low cohesiveness, it's usually associated with low conformity. And if you have high cohesiveness, it may be associated with either high or mild conformity. But you need cohesiveness on a team in order to be successful. Goals, which is something that we mentioned also that affects teams. And think about it, outcomes desired by a team or a, a whole, not just goals of the individual, but goals of the members of the team. And if a team can come together and decide and be cohesive regarding their goals for that particular team, they're going to be successful. Leadership in teams. What exactly is leadership in teams? Well, informal leaders are important in determining whether a team accomplishes its goals. 
And you think about multiple leaders may exist on a team, but it may not always be a right situation as far as having too many leaders on a particular team, which can lead to ineffectiveness. And effective team leaders influence virtually all the other factors that affect team behaviors. That's just a brief summary of lecture series number 10. We want to thank you for listening to us again. And again, our topic was leading and developing teams.